Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video lecture, we're going to be discussing the relationship between two categorical variables. We'll be talking about things like chi-squared and inferential statistics, what it means and how it relates to healthcare data. Again, we'll be talking about how inferential statistics are used to assess the relationship between two categorical variables. In other words, how strong the relationship is. We'll be looking at the sensitivity and specificity, and then we'll be comparing and contrasting two types of correlation statistics. One of the things we need to look at are descriptive statistics versus inferential. With inferential statistics, we're basically asking the question in the first bullet point. Is this just a random occurrence or is this evidence that there's a big relationship between two variables? In this example, gender and being discharged to home. And a hypothesis test is used to answer that question. Descriptive dis statistics are used to display and analyze the relationship. So in this table, we have 20 out of 32. We have 62.5 female patients are discharged home. Uh, then we have 10 out of 24, 41.7% of male patients are discharged at home. So the steps here are to determine both the null and the alternative hypothesis. And that would be a patient could be discharged at home and what gender they are are totally independent and have no relationship or they're discharged at home and the gender is not independent. In other words, there is a relationship. Then we need to accept, set the acceptable type one error or the alpha level. So we're willing to accept a 5% chance, this is very common, or probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. So in other words, we can live with the 5% probability that the null hypothesis is wrong when it's actually true. And then the way we're going to do that is with chi-squared. What's important in this slide is this. We're comparing the value observed in the sample to the null hypothesis value. That's what chi-squared does. <clears throat> if the gender and discharge home were independent, we would expect that the distribution of the four cells, male, female, versus home, not home, would be uniform and not have a pattern. So the basis of the chi-squared statistic is the observed and expected frequency in each of the four table cells that we saw over here. Home, not home, male, female. So basically the expected cell frequency is the row total times the column total divided by the grand total of all cells. And we see that in table 6.3 on this slide and also in your text. So the column total is displayed here for home 30, not home 26. Raw total is 56. Row total, excuse me. Then 
we basically have to calculate the expected cell frequencies. We don't really need to do that. What's really important is to understand what chi-squared does. If we were to work this all the way to the end, and you're welcome to do so if you like, we would compare the test statistic to a critical value listed based on the alpha level and the distribution of the test statistic. We would reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is more extreme than the critical value. If it isn't, then we don't reject it. So the chi-square distribution is with parentheses R1 minus one versus column minus one degrees of freedom, right? So if the alpha is set to be 5%, in other words, that's the level of error we're willing to accept, we'll reject it if the test statistic is greater than 3.841, right? So in this case, the sample data does not provide sufficient evidence to reject null hypothesis and conclude there's no significant relationship between gender and the likelihood of being discharged to home. Another key concept that we need to understand that's more important than how to do the calculations is the sensitivity versus the specificity. When we're using one categorical variable, say smoking status, to predict another categorical variable, say cancer status, the sensitivity here would be the proportion of the sample with the indicator present and a positive test. So that would be the proportion of, say, the sample of the people we're looking at with positive smoking status and a positive status for cancer divided by those with the cancer indicator present. Specificity is the proportion of the sample without the indicator and a negative test divided by those without. So here's how this plays out. A health plan wishes to use their patient portal as a predictor of whether a patient will seek care at an emergency room during the year. So they believe that patients who do not use the patient portal are more likely to experience an ER visit. They collect the following data based on enrollees during the previous plan year. So what is the specificity and the sensitivity of patient portal use? Well, we have a table here. So in this table, if patients did not have patient portal access, they had 30 emergency room visits during the previous year versus 23 that did not. For patients that did have access to the portal, 15 of them visited the ER versus 86 who did not. So this is our table. So it's set up for patient portal access and yes, for ER visits in A, the upper left-hand corner here. And that is because the health plan believes patients who don't use the portal are more likely to have an emergency room visit. So here's how it plays out. We have A, which is patients who don't have portal, divided by patients that do have the portal access plus patients who do not have the portal access, excuse me, plus those who do. So it's 30 over 45, so that's 66.7. The specificity is the number of patients who don't have access to the portal, which is 86, 
plus those who have don't have access and didn't visit the emergency room, which is 23. So that is 78.9%. So now we're looking at the correlation. What is the strength of these two relationships? And with Pearson's coefficient, it's measuring the linear association between two continuous variables. In other words, how much of a relationship, if we were to draw graphed, and we have two variables, is it going like this, where all the dots are right around this? Or is it more like this? where there's really no relationship. That's really what we're looking at here. Here's a great example of some positive correlation. Notice on the y-axis over here, we have the total charge. On the x-axis, we have the length of stay in days. So if we get to day seven over here, we're going to be at 35,000. So if we were to draw a line, we see the line looks roughly like that. So, that, so this is a very strong correlation. This is a positive correlation. The correlation is going up from the lower left to the upper right. So again, you can see if we were to draw a linear line doing the calculations, this is how it looks. So this is an example of a strong correlation. And that's all I have for you. We'll see you online. Bye now.